1 Samuel chapter number 1. Begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, Now there was a certain man of Ramathane Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jerom, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraithite. Now that was a mouthful. I'm not going to read that verse anymore. Verse number two. And he had two wives. This fellow's in trouble. Uh, the name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Peninnah. And Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priest of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Peninnah his wife and to all her sons and daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful for the good grace of God that changed our life when we called on Jesus and were saved. And God, we're thankful for the one that was saved at the jail this morning. And God, we're thankful you still come seeking to save that which is lost. God, I pray if there's any in our service today that does not know Jesus, I pray that before the final amen of this service, they'd come to trust in Christ. God, we're thankful, Lord, for this day that we celebrate, the day, the Lord's day. We celebrate your resurrection. We celebrate your grace and your mercy. We celebrate your forgiveness. We celebrate your salvation. We celebrate the gifts of the Holy Spirit that, Lord, uh, are incorporated in us by being saved. Uh, God, we celebrate the Word of God and the people of God. We just have much cause to rejoice and worship today because of all that you have blessed us with. And, Lord, this day we also celebrate in our country Mother's Day, and we're thankful, Lord, for... Uh, a mother's love and we're thankful Lord for uh, you allowing me to have a godly mother and we're thankful for godly mothers here in this uh, sanctuary this morning we're thankful for my dear wife that's a godly mother and God you blessed us so God we're thankful sure. Lord there's people out in the world today that don't have godly mothers uh, there are mothers that give their children away and sell their children and leave them in dumpsters and God, I pray that somehow, some way, we can reach them with the gospel. And Lord, they can know the love of God and then share it with their children. Now, Father, I pray that you would uh, use this unworthy vessel and, God, you'd help us to deliver the message you've placed upon our heart. I pray that, God, uh, in my infirmities, that, God, you would uh, uh, wink at my ignorance and, God, you would uh, certainly help me to say everything you'd have me to say and nothing contrary to what you'd have me to say. I pray that the message would be received with gladness, and I pray your people would be edified and encouraged in the Word of God. I pray revival would break out in our land. I pray for, uh, Lord, you to do something supernatural even in our midst today. Now, Father, I pray for Miss Crystal. You would touch her. You know her need. I pray for Miss Brandy the same. Uh, pray you'd continue to help Miss Mary. I pray for Brother Josh today that, Lord, you'd use him in a mighty way down there in Falmouth. Now, Father, have your will and way amongst us. Speak to every heart. And God, put a hedge about us. And we plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over this place, for it's in his wonderful and glorious and holy name we pray. Amen. And amen. In these verses, we find a lady by the name of Hannah. Uh, you're hard pressed to find any lady more godly than this lady in the scriptures. And I want to look at some things about Hannah before we get to the message. Uh, but I want you to notice, first of all, that Hannah is barren. In verse number five, the Bible says the Lord shut up her womb, she could have no children. Can I say throughout the Bible, you'll find where God touches barren wombs. Mm, can I say that Samson, his mother, could have no children? Can I say John the Baptist's mother, Elizabeth, could have no children? And there are other cases where there were women who could not have children, but God intervened. Sure. And can I say whenever God intervenes, blessing follows, huh? And I'm glad when he intervenes and... 
moves into our life and changes things and does things for us that no other body, no one else could ever do and give us help that no one else could ever grant. We see she's barren. I want you to notice that Hannah is bullied. Look in verse number 6. The Bible says, and her adversary, that's the other wife. That's why you can't have two women in a household, by the way. And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her to fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he, speaking of Elkanah, did so year after year, went to sacrifice. Uh, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Uh, the other woman's making fun of her because she can't have children. Uh, 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 the other woman's blessed to have sons and daughters. Uh, but this woman, uh, 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 Hannah, can have no children. Uh, and she's throwing it up in her face all the time. Uh, all the time saying, look at uh, how the Lord's blessed me with children. You must be wicked. You must be a sinner. Uh, uh, God don't love you. Uh, you can't have any children. And she bullied her day in and day out. But when they went to the house, Lord... She was so vexed with this bullying, she wept sore and couldn't eat. I want you to notice that she is broken. Look in verse number 10. I'm going somewhere. Hang with me. The Bible says, And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. She is so broken that her soul becomes bitter. She's broken. Where if you'd read on that, when she prays, she can't even uh, utter the words. Her mouth's moving, but nothing comes out because she's so broken and she's weeping sore. Have you ever hurt so bad that you wept so much you ran out of tears? She's wept sore. She's barren. She's bullied. She's broken, but she's also biased. She is being prejudged. Look in verse 14. And Eli, he's the high priest, said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thine wine from thee. She is so vexed and so broken and so tore up on the altar of the Lord, the high priest thinks she's drunk. He prejudges her. Hmm. This woman can't get a break. I mean, uh, her adversary in the same household is bullying her. The Lord hadn't shined on her womb. She's so broken, she runs out of words, uh, and she goes to one place, she thinks she's going to get help, and the high priest is there and tells her she's a drunk. Hmm. She says, I'm not drunk. I'm just broken. But can I say this about Hannah? Hannah becomes blessed. Look at verse 17. She told him, I'm not drunk. I poured out my soul before the Lord. And here's what Eli says in verse 17. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house in Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass uh, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived uh, that she bare a son, uh, and she called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Uh, she was blessed. Uh, God touched her womb. Uh, she has a son uh, named Samuel. Uh, Samuel goes on to become the greatest high priest that Israel has ever known. Uh, uh, Samuel was the one uh, that God anointed, uh, uh, used to anoint uh, uh, the greatest king that Israel had ever known. David, uh, Samuel did great before the Lord. Uh, and Israel was blessed because Samuel was their high priest. Uh, Hannah became blessed but I want you to notice something about Hannah. We'll get to the message. I want you to notice her conscientious choice. Look at verse 11. This is where the rubber meets the road in her life. The Bible says after she wept sore, she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, 
If thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid but will give unto thine handmaid a man child then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall no razor come upon his head. We see that in the midst of her brokenness she goes to the one place where she can get some help. She calls on the Lord and she says Lord if thou wilt remember remember me. If you will not forget thine handmaid, if you will touch my affliction, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. When Eli said the Lord hath remembered thee, and then when she got back home, the Bible says the Lord remembered her, and then she conceived and bare a son named Samuel. Listen, she made a conscientious choice that if God would look down on me in favor, and he blesses me. I'm going to choose to take that blessing, that thing that he gives me, and I'm going to give it back to God. Can you imagine what a choice she made? Hey, all the love you have for little baby Hannah, how much joy she's brought in your life, how much you love holding her and feeding her and watch her grow. The Hannah, she didn't receive that. Once Samuel was weaned, she took him down to the house of God, gave him to Eli, said here he's God's uh, uh, she chose uh, not to be able to watch him grow uh, not to be able to nourish him uh, not be able to uh, pick him up when he falls down and help him uh, she said no uh, God gave him to me uh, I'm giving him to God uh, what a choice she made that day uh, I want to preach with God's help on conscientious choices she knew what she was asking and she followed through when God blessed. She made a conscientious choice. Brother Brian, she said, God, if you'll do this for me, I'll choose to give him to you. She knew what she was entering into, Miss Janet. She made a conscientious choice. And can I say... A lot of what goes on in our lives, we just so haphazardly make decisions without ever thinking about the ramifications. And can I say, today, we need to start making conscientious choices. Can I say, with every choice, there is a consequence. With every choice that we make, there will either be blessing and joy comes from it, or there will be heartache and hardship come from it. Amen. So it's very important the choices we make not to enter into lightly, but to be conscientious, realizing there is consequences for my choices. Can I ask you some questions today? What will be your choice or what is your choice concerning the Almighty? the Lord Jesus Christ. What you choose to do with Him has very serious consequences. Can I say there are people uh, that are waiting for God to send some kind of lightning bolt or sign from the sky uh, uh, to uh, give them the answers they're seeking? Uh, but can I say no lightning bolt will ever come? Uh, uh, can I say God has already given us the answers uh, from the Word of God uh, and we're begotten by the uncorruptible Word of God? Uh, it is through the Word of God that faith is formed. So then faith cometh by hearing, uh, hearing by the Word of God. Uh, and the writer of Hebrews tells us through the Word of God God, we understand that God formed the heavens and the earth. Uh, we understand through the Word of God uh, that God sent His only begotten Son uh, uh, to an old rugged cross one day, Brother Phil, uh, who would empty Himself of His life's blood. Uh, he'd bleed and die and become a your sacrifice and my sacrifice uh, that you and I could have the pardon of sins uh, and be saved that uh, like Brother James just sang about. Uh, uh, God uh, uh, made a choice to send His Son for you and I. Uh, and God says we must choose Him to have eternal life. Uh, and my dear friends, what will your choice be concerning God? Uh, it's not some supernatural event. It's a choice you will make. Will I be obedient to repent and call on Jesus Christ and ask Him to save me? Or will I reject Him? The supernatural event happens after we make the choice. When you trust in Jesus Christ, something supernatural happens. 
God through the Holy Spirit cuts away that fleshly part of your heart and he moves in and seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, he makes a new creature out of you. Uh, things you used to be you won't be anymore. Uh, he changes you from the inside out. Uh, uh, that's why there are some uh, uh, whose lives are different uh, after they make a profession because they have possession. Jesus moves in. Uh, there are others uh, uh, that never ever truly get saved and that's why there's no change in their life. Yeah. What will your choice be concerning the Almighty? Have you ever trusted in Jesus? Have you ever made Him your choice? See, my dear friend, so much emphasis is put on what God will do for you. No, it's what He's already done for you. He sent His only begotten Son to die for you that you might have life and have it more abundantly. See, your conscientious choice deals with eternity. The consequences are where you'll spend eternity. See, we have a philosophy uh, uh, to live for the day, and he who has the most toys wins. There's nothing wrong with toys unless they get in place of God. Yes, sir. Mm. See, when your toys and everything you try to amass in this life becomes your God, you're making a conscientious choice. Yes, Amen. Eternity's at stake. You see, if you're blessed to live 150 years, and I don't know who'd want to, you ever seen them people 117 years old, what they look like? <laughs> they're having birthday parties for them, and that person don't even know they're in the world. <laughs> Who would want to live that long? Uh, can you imagine all they've seen in 117 years? That, that's, there was somebody just died that was 117 years old. Can you imagine all the changes they've seen? I'm amazed at all the changes I've seen. I'm only 54. Uh, these kids today couldn't live how we come up, Brother Bob, with no microwaves, no cell phones, uh, no air conditioning. Uh, I remember when toilets were outside. Uh, these kids wouldn't know what to do with the fly swatter. They'd think they's a pancake flipper or something. Uh, have no idea. Uh, and what is it with these guys got these little four-cylinder engines, put a muffler on it this big, think there's something. Sound like a motorboat going down around. I invite you to have church go out there and check out that Chevelle. You want to hear what a motor sounds like. He come rumbling in. I looked up. I was in the office. I looked up and said, what is that? Huh? That's music to my... Now that's a motor. Huh? Take that Honda and stick it. Huh? That's what a car sounds like. But you see, we've got so involved with all the modern conveniences, Internet, Facebook. Do you realize on your cell phone you've got more computer on that cell phone than what I had in the 80s when I got my computer programming degree? Those computers took up a whole room. We had nine-inch floppy disk. You don't even have disk anymore. You got SIM cards. Huh? I remember when they come out with PCs, I said, these things will never last. They're too slow. <laughs> well, I missed the market on that, huh? Well, PCs didn't last. Now it's tablets. What I'm trying to say, we're so wrapped up in everything being so convenient, and everything has been done this way to get our minds off of what is reality. If you're blessed to live 150 years in this life, it's one grain of sand on the seashore. It's one drop of water in the ocean compared to eternity. And what you do with Jesus Christ in this life depends on where you're going to spend eternity. What conscientious choice will you make? So I've got a lot, a lot, a lot of years, man. People are living to 117, but there's also people who don't make it to 50. We don't know what a day brings forth. All we know is we have right now. You know, I believe if Hannah wouldn't have went to the sanctuary that day and got on the altar that day and poured herself out before God, she'd have never had a child. See, our conscientious choices are also timely choices. And what you do with Jesus today may affect your eternity. I thought about this. 
not only what will your choice be concerning the Almighty, what will your choice be in, in ad adherence? If you're saved, it does matter how you live. And to adhere means to follow. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. How's your following doing? How are you choosing to do there? Hmm? It does matter how you follow Jesus. Some follow very slowly. Can I say there is nothing worse than being with a little child and a little child lags behind and you're in a hurry. They don't want to be carried. They want to walk. And they do it very slowly. And you're in a hurry. Well, sometimes we lag behind Jesus very slowly. Did y'all see that video last week of that little boy? He's on third base. And, and his coach tells him to run home. And he makes up his mind he's going to, and he does it in slow motion. He's going... For all 45 feet from third base to home. The coach is trying to cheer him on, and he goes slower and slower and slower. I mean, it's the cutest thing. And he's, I mean, he's so small, the helmet hits his shoulder. I mean, he's just a little fella. He can't be over three or four, and he's doing that all the way home. And it's, 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 the video's been on everything. I, I saw that thing. I thought, uh, probably one of mine do something like that. Huh? Uh, Sometimes that's how we follow Jesus in slow motion. We lag way behind. The Bible says the nighttime cometh when no man can work. The fields are white unto harvest, but the labors are few. Listen to what Joshua said about following Jesus. Judges twenty four fifteen, He said this, that crowd, they was trying to make up their mind which way they was going to go and who they was going to follow and all that. He says this. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Joshua said, here's my choice. I'm following the Lord. He's saying, the Lord's been good to me. Yeah. Uh, he said, when the other spies said, we won't go in, he said, I said, we ought to go in, and they chose not to go in. He said, but when we finally did get here 40 years later, I'm one of the few left. And he said, and God gave me the strength I had when I was 40, and he gave me the land he promised me. He said, the Lord's been good to me. I'm just going to stick with the Lord. Yeah. He said, I remember when the Lord parted the Red Sea. I remember when the Lord uh, uh, made the bitter waters of Mars sweet. Uh, I remember when the Lord rained down manna for the first time. Uh, hey, I've never had to uh, replace my shoes or my clothes because they've lasted. Uh, God's been good to me. Uh, I'm just going to follow him. Huh? Amen. Who are you going to follow? Hmm. Thought about this. What will your choice be? concerning attending the things of God. You see, the things of God need attending to, need attention. Hmm? You better be careful. You don't attend to things, you can get some problems. If you don't attend to your flower beds, you're going to get weeds. We attended a yard and flowers all day yesterday, six hours. You know why I did that? Because I love my wife. That's what she wanted for Mother's Day. She wanted all her flower beds to look pretty. I hate it. I hate every bit of it. She knows I hate it. We were spreading mulch the other day. She planted some new hostas. She, she, Miss Eloise, them hostas, where's Eloise? Them hostas you gave her years ago? Yeah, we have them all over the yard. She keeps cutting on planting. They just keep. We got one It's this big around. I'm not kidding you. We have hostas everywhere. You can't kill them. So she planted, she cut them and planted four houses. We're out there doing all that, and I'm spreading the mulch, and I don't know where they come from, but there was ants in that mulch. I mean, fire ants. And they started getting all over me. And I'm thinking, I hate this stuff. Till we got done, and I could get in the showers, I felt ants all over me, you know? You ever feel that way? I knew they was everywhere, huh? I hate that stuff, huh? But I do it because I love her. But if you don't tend to that stuff, Brother Clint, all that hard work, then weeds start popping up. Round up. Yeah, kill the weeds. Yeah. You got to tend to it. Can I say? You got to tend to. You don't take care of this, it ain't going to last long. 
You got to tend to it. You got to shower it. You got to brush its teeth. Uh, you got to supposedly exercise. Eat right. I've made a mid-year's resolution. I'm going on an all-sugar diet. Uh, because you only got one shot to take care of this you don't take care of it guess what it's not going to last there's things that need attention huh little Riker where's he at is he sleeping little Riker needs a lot of attention he can't walk can't cut up his own food don't even have much teeth to chew it needs a lot of attention can't go to the bathroom by himself needs a lot of attention if she don't attend to him things are going to get real ugly at their household we need attention. Well, can I say the things of God need attending to? You know why God saved you? So you would glorify Him. Amen. And the works of God need attending to. Some of you just show up on Sunday and think, well, this is wonderful, but you don't understand all the work that goes into us being able to have church on Sunday. There have been people who have attended the things of God. Can I say it starts in our own personal life? it's amazing we'll take uh, the medicine the doctors give us and we'll do what the doctors say sometimes and we'll eat three or four times a day and we'll do all the things we need to do to take care of but we don't take care of our spiritual man yes, sir. what choice will you make concerning attending the things of God how about your walk your walk's very important your testimony is very important it's not about what you think about yourself and your relationship with God. What do other people say? Hmm? Uh, I got a report to this week. Somebody here in the church, something, you know, they're shining their light. I, I told that person today about that, and it just touched them. I could see it touched them. You know why? Because they've been attending to their walk. Hmm? It's impacted somebody else, and probably more than somebody else. Uh, how about attending to your witness? How many people have you told about Jesus Christ in the last week? Amen. Need to attend to that. How are they going to get saved if somebody don't tell them about Jesus? Right. Yeah. I'm glad somebody told me about Jesus. Amen. How about your worship? If you just show up to come to church, you're not going to worship. Right. Yep. Worship starts on your knees long before you get to church. Right. Worship starts in your daily seeking God in the Scriptures. And worship start, uh, starts in your meditation on the things of God throughout the week. I, I was not kidding when I said that I'd been singing that song all week. I had while I was out there hating flower work. Uh, I was singing that song in my head, uh, thanking God that I got saved. Uh, hey, I'm glad He tended the flower bed I was in uh, and came to where I was uh, and got all the weeds out of my life uh, and made a difference where I could bloom for Him. Yeah. What choice will you make in attending the things of God? What choices will you make in adversity? Anybody suffered any hardship lately? The choices you make in your hardship have consequences. You can be like a lot of people and throw in the towel. Or you can say, this didn't catch God by surprise. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And I'm just going to trust in Him. Job said, though He slay me, yet will I trust in Him. See, when you are in, a, in an adverse situation and tragedy comes to your life and you still choose to shine for Jesus, that impacts people. Amen. Can I say, everybody's seen the phony balonies. Everybody knows a hypocrite or ten. But somebody that's real, people say, that's what I want in my life. Can I say this? What choice will you make toward advancing? See, somewhere in our mindset, we think we get to a place with God and that's all, all the farther we're supposed to go. No, an army is to march. Amen. We're to move forward. The Bible says that we are to grow in grace. It doesn't say we're to get to a point in grace. It's a progressive work. We're constantly to be moving toward our Savior and getting closer to Him. But can I say this? It also means to move on. Can I say there are some things out of our control? Yes. 
Now you can sit under a juniper tree and you can waller around about it and carry it with you everywhere you go and have a bag of that junk hanging off of you. And you know what? After a while, people quit having sympathy for you. Yeah. Or you can choose to move on and yeah. say, the Lord's bigger than this mess and I'll just trust Him. Right. Sure. Amen. I'll advance and get closer to God be a great day in your life when you realize hey I'm just going to give it to Jesus and I'm going to move on Amen. what choice will you have in your acquaintances there are consequences with who you choose to hang out with Amen. young people listen to me it does make a difference who your friends are Amen. because you'll be judged on who you associate yourself with you can be a good boy or a good girl and hang out with a rough crowd and they're going to think you're just like them. Or you can choose to just hang out with people that want to hang out with Jesus or just hang out with Jesus yourself. You know, it's lonely sometimes being a Christian, but it's fulfilling always being a Christian. It, it matters. There's consequences who you choose to have in a relationship with. There's consequences with that. You better be careful. You better choose the one that God would have you choose. Yes, That's right. You want a blessed relationship. You don't want one that's based on fulfilling the lust of this flesh and this world. Right. Amen. Can I say I've seen the end of those relationships They're called train wrecks. Mm -hmm. It's called broken hearts. And broken lives there are some that never recover fully from them there's consequences to your choices let me say this lastly I got so much more I could say on this, on this, on this thought what choice will you make concerning admonition concerning preaching God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe Amen. and God chose through through preaching to exhort, admonish, rebuke uh, the people of God. What choice will we make with preaching? When God gives the man of God a message, it is for our admonition. And we are to embrace it. And if you truly come to the house of God seeking God, He could preach a salvation message out of John 3.16. You could be saved 30 years. You'll still get something out of it to help you. Because you come seeking God. And He says, seek and you shall find. So what will you do with what God gives you? The choice is yours. Many people, by the time they get to their car, they've already forgot about the message because they didn't come for the message. They come to be a part of a service and to ease their conscience in hopes that God will bless them. You know how God will bless you? If you embrace the message. Amen. Said all that to say this. Your choices have consequences. She made a conscientious choice. And she honored her choice. And God honored her conscientious choice. I guarantee you across churches across this globe today, especially in America where we celebrate Mother's Day, there are people preaching about Hannah. You know why? Because her choice counted for God. Let me say this. Having a blessed life is not predicated on luck, it's not predicated on circumstances. You're not a product of your environment. Hmm? I'm tired of that junk. Can I help you something? My parents divorced when I was 13 years of age. Both my parents smoked all their lives. I'm not a product of my environment. I've never smoked a cigarette, and I've been married to that woman going on 30 years. There's conscientious choices, and there are blessings from those choices. It's not based on circumstance, not based on luck, not based on you being a product of your vine. It's not based on a supernatural event. God did not put a halo over me one day and walk away and shield me from all kinds of heartache and hardship so that I would be a pastor someday. I got a lot of lumps and a lot of scars early in my life. There wasn't no supernatural event. 
And I wasn't sitting in a service one night and the, the, the ceiling rolled back and the angelic choir began to sing and, and all of a sudden uh, 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 the spirit descended in the form of a dove. Never happened that way. God spoke to my heart and I made a choice to trust him. A blessed life is always the result of conscientious choices which honor the Lord. You want a blessed life? Choose Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Our life isn't perfect. We got problems, but we sure are blessed. Amen. God's been good to us. I have no sad tales to tell. I have no uh, 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 big old problem story to lay on you today. I, I, I just say I'm blessed. Amen. God's been good. Amen. I am reaping far better than I have sowed. Amen. Mm. Amen. God is good. Amen. Choose Him and your life will be blessed. Isaiah 40, 31 says, Wait upon the Lord. Those that wait upon the Lord shall be renewed, mount up with wings. I'm trying to help you with this. If you've, you, you're on the verge of making a bad choice, just choose Jesus and wait on Him. Amen. Wait on Him. Yes. Wait on Him. Wait on Him. He'll come through. I don't know why this popped in my head, but I'm going to say it. I got so tired of looking for a Christian woman. Got so tired. When I was young, all the Christian girls were trying to get out of church. I couldn't get enough of church. So I made a conscientious choice. I told God this. I said, God, I'm sick of this. If you got one for me, send her to me. I'm not dating anybody ever again. Six months later, a friend of mine brought her to a revival meet to meet me. Just wait on him. Maybe you've been praying for somebody to get saved. Just keep trusting. Wait on him. Maybe somebody on the job is driving you crazy and you just want to quit your job. Just wait on God. Just give it to just choose Jesus and give it to Him. Yeah. Hey, maybe it's a spiritual battle you got. Just wait on God. I'm trying to help you. Choices have consequences. And a blessed life is based on those that choose and make decisions that will honor the Lord. God remembered Hannah. And he'll remember you because he's no respecter of persons. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. If you're here today and you're not saved, during this invitation, why don't you come? We'll take a Bible and show you how you can be saved today. God spoke to your heart about something else. These altars are open. Why don't you come? Choose him. Put it in his hands. He can handle it, friend. He did for Hannah, and he will for you. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, you shined on Hannah. Lord, there have been times you've shined on us. And God, we bless your holy name. If Father helps somebody, boy, I just feel like somebody here today is about to throw their life away. God, help them to choose the Lord might be somebody here today lost God help them to choose Jesus oh there might be somebody here really struggling in in an adverse situation about ready to throw in the towel help them to choose Jesus God I pray these folks in the altar Lord you'd honor their request like you did Hannah I pray you'd bless now God do a work in this invitation Speak to hearts. Lord, help folks just to give it to Jesus. Choose to honor Him with their life. They'll never be sorry they did. God, get glory. And we'll certainly praise Your holy name for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.